Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today, I want to show you how to create a handwritten text animation using Adobe Animate. In this lesson, we'll also go over how to export it as a GIF file and place it into an interactive InDesign layout. So let's get started. All right, so let's get started on creating our text animation using Adobe Animate. On the left hand side, I'm going to select the Create New button. That'll bring up this new document window. From there, I'm going to select the web option. From the presets, I want to choose very high. That's going to give me a width of 1024 and a height of 768. The frame rate will be 24. And the platform type, we want to choose HTML5 Canvas. So if you have it set to action script, swap that out and choose HTML5 canvas. Go ahead and click create. That's going to bring up your work, your work set up here. So the canvas and down below, you'll notice we have one layer. You can rename it or not. Um, and we're going to build out the animation on this one layer. The first thing we want to do is actually create the text on the canvas. So go ahead and click the text tool and click anywhere on the canvas and type the text that you want. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to just type out the word welcome and exclamation point. I'm going to get out of my text tool and select the selection tool. And again, you can move that anywhere on the canvas you want. I want to scale this up. So on the right hand side, you'll see I have my transform uh, panel. I'm going to hover over any of the two um, percentage figures here and scale that up. I'm just moving it to the right. You want to make sure that the constrained proportion link is turned on. This way you know that it's going to constrain them as you're scaling. So something like that is okay for now. I'm going to click on my alignment tab and I want to align this to the stage center both vertically and horizontally. Great. So you can see I have my text here. And of course, for this tutorial, we want to choose something that is script. So in this uh, version here, I'm using a font called Pacifico. Of course, you can use your own script font. So I'm going to put my cursor in between the E and the exclamation point. And I'm going to set the kerning to about two. Just open that up a little bit. Something like that is good. And now we're ready to start adding the animation. Before we do that, I want to modify and break apart. So let's click on the text with the selection tool and go to modify and break apart. You might have to do this twice in order to fully break it apart. So modify, break apart. And what this does is um, it goes from editable text to almost like a create outlines in Illustrator. So now I can't edit the text if I want to. So make sure that you do that previously before you break break it apart. Okay, so how are we going to animate this? I want to zoom in a little bit here. And basically we're going to focus in on the timeline below and we're going to add keyframes as we're essentially just erasing bits and pieces of the text. And each time we, we erase a piece, we add a new or insert a new keyframe. So let's go ahead and do that. What I want to do is grab the eraser tool. You can, you can also press E on your keyboard as a shortcut. So I'm in my eraser tool. Let's click on the tool tab and you can resize, you can resize the, the, the brush of the eraser. So you want it something, something a little bit smaller in scale as you're, you're uh, erasing. So down below here, I already have a keyframe. I want to add one as a second keyframe. I'm just going to press F6 on my keyboard. That creates a new keyframe. You can also just click on the insert keyframe um, icon here. But F6 will add a new keyframe. And as you're working, as you're erasing, uh, once you're done one of the erase, erase motions, go ahead and, and press F6 to create a new keyframe. 
So I've already created a new keyframe and I'm gonna start from the right and work my way to the left. And then we'll just reverse the frame so it comes in as a uh, proper handwritten text animation. So let's go as a first step, let's get rid of this, the point there. Okay, that's good, I'm gonna hit F6. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. So F6 and I'm gonna Command Plus to move in. And then what I like to do is just, just start erasing a little bit at a time. And then hit F6 to create a new keyframe. Erase a little bit more, F6, and then erase it all, F6. I'm gonna start going down the E here. F6. F6, I'm gonna zoom in here. I wanna stop the animation right here at this line and then continue it on at the top. Because remember, we're imitating a handwritten animation here. So you wanna make it as realistic as you can. Now that, my brush is a little bit too big, but let's see if I can get away with it here. Yeah, that's good. Remember, this doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna be playing out at a pretty fast pace. So you don't have to worry about being really perfect when you get to these edges. All right, so I'm gonna stop it there, F6. I'm gonna shrink my brush a bit because it was a little bit too big. Zoom in a bit. And then, oh, maybe still a little bit too big. Okay, so F6, and now you can start plugging away at the other. Obviously, I'm going a little bit faster here. You take a little bit more time as you're doing this. Oops. So F6, remember, it can be easy to miss pressing F6 as you're doing this. So I'm gonna maybe do something like this now. F6. It does take a little time and effort to get through this animation or erasing it, I should say. But I promise it's going to, it'll be worthwhile once you're done because then you'll see, you know, all how it plays out and how it'll look. It looks pretty cool. So F6. F6. Oops. Remember, Command Z is your friend if you happen to make a mistake. Okay, so just keep erasing bits and pieces as we go here. And hit F6. I'm just gonna shrink my brush down a bit here because it's getting into some tight quarters. So F6. F6 and keep going. F6, keep going. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and just increase the size of my brush just a bit. Just keep going here. F6 to create a new keyframe. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it, you should take your time as you're doing this, as you're erasing the, the parts of um, as you're racing the parts of the, the text. I'm just gonna finish this off and then I'm gonna show you how to, um, I'm gonna show you how to export it as a GIF file and then we'll put it in InDesign.
All right, so I'm just wrapping up the animation here. I've erased the text using the eraser tool. And every time I take a pause from each erasing uh, motion, I just press F6 or create a new, insert a new keyframe as you're, as you're going here. So let's go ahead and add a new keyframe, F6, and then let's just finish this off. Perfect, now it's gone, but in my timeline, you see all these keyframes here. And if I play this back by just grabbing the uh, scrubber here and making my way to the left, you could see that that's gonna play out. But again, it's backwards, so we have to make sure that it plays out properly. So to do that, let's go ahead and click on the layer, anywhere on the layer, and what that's gonna do is gonna highlight all the keyframes. Just right click on uh, any of the keyframes, right click, and then down below here you see reverse frames. So let's just reverse it. And in the player here, you can see that you have a play button, but if you also hit return on your keyboard, that'll play out the animation as well. Let me just zoom out a bit and hit return. And you can see it plays out properly and in the fashion that I erased it. Now, again, I did that pretty quickly. You would want to take your time. Again, if it's playing out at, this is just under two seconds, then it doesn't really matter. I mean, don't worry about the small details as you're doing this, because it's gonna be so fast that even if you miss or have some imperfection, you would never know, okay? So I have my animation there. Now it's time to get this into InDesign. So let's, let's go ahead and export it as a GIF file. All right, so to export your text animation, go up to File, Export, and choose Export Animated GIF. Now because I already chose a high quality when I set up my document, if for whatever reason you had to even increase this more, you can, you can actually uh, add a new size to increase it before you export it. Okay, so I'm okay with 1024, but let's just say I wanted to make it, you know, 2000 pixels. That's also gonna increase the percentage, okay? And what, what that'll do is just process through. It'll create it at a even higher quality, okay? And you can see it's still there, and I can play it. And you can, you can preview it there too, which is nice. The other thing you wanna look after is the looping. So you do want this to play once or do you want it to loop forever? Because we're putting this on a fictional portfolio cover, I only want it to play once, once we open up or launch the InDesign uh, layout. So I'm just gonna choose once, but of course you can select uh, loop forever. Once you've done that, I'm gonna hit save. And I'm just going to save this on, uh, my desktop is fine. And let's just call this Welcome Animation. And I'm gonna hit save. And that's going to save on my desktop. And the next step is importing it or placing it into an InDesign file, an InDesign layout. Okay, so we're back in InDesign now. And what I wanna do is bring in that GIF file that we just exported from animate and place it as an animated title on this fictional design portfolio cover so what i'm going to do you can go to file and place and bring it in that way i'm just going to drag it onto my layout and then click drag and drag it over the text now because this is an animation where it doesn't uh, appear until it starts animating. That's how it's gonna show here. So essentially you're not gonna see anything. So it's just a matter of going into your EPUB preview and there'll be a lot of back and forth to make sure that it's going to uh, be the right size that you want. Now that's pretty small, obviously. So let's go ahead and start um, bumping it up in size. So I'm gonna click on the content grabber and hold Option Command on Mac. If you're on a Windows uh, operating system, it's shift and control. So option command greater than, let's go ahead and maybe make it 
uh, I, I increased it by five hits there. And then just go to any of your interactive tools or panels and open the EPUB preview and see how it looks. So that's a good size there. I might want to maybe move it to the left a bit. Let's have a look here. So there is some back and forth from your layout to the EPUB preview. So we're pretty close here. I'm going to move it maybe one, two, three more hits. Let's take a look now. Okay, I'm happy with that. But as a final step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down just a bit to make it closer to that text. And I want to click on anywhere, not the content grabber, click anywhere on the frame. Hold your shift and command on, uh, if you're on a Mac, on Windows, it's shift and control. Grab the top right hand corner of the frame and pull it out just a little bit. Scale it up a bit. All right, let's have a look. I think we're pretty close. And as a final step, I'm going to publish this online and we'll take a look and see how it, it, it appears in a web browser. So I'm pretty happy with that. I am going to move it to the right, maybe a few more hits and then take a look just to make sure that we're, we're right there before I publish this online. Perfect. So what I'm going to do now, is let's go ahead and publish this online and see how it looks in a web browser. Okay, so to publish online, go ahead in the top right hand corner of your workspace, click the share button, and then select publish online. Now I had one previously, I'm just going to create a new publish online document. And I'm going to call this text animation two. And it's only one page, so it will be a single page. And then what I'm going to do is just going to select publish. Okay, so my document is ready now to view. So let's go ahead and click view document. I'm going to increase the size of my browser. You saw it come in on page load. So I'm going to copy that, create a new a new tab and then let's take a look. It's stalled a little bit there. It's just the way that uh, it, it's coming in a little bit slow, but you get the concept there of how you can build out your own um, text animation in Adobe Animate and then transfer it over into an interactive layout using Adobe InDesign. So that's how you create a text animation using Adobe Animate and place it into an InDesign interactive layout. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified when new videos have been posted. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design, go ahead and click the playlist above.